Hey everybody, how's it going? I am your host Adrian, coming to you almost live from lovely Petaluma, California, here in Studio MC2 at QuickSurf Internet Studios. Linux News Log is a proud member of the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here. Do feel free to head on over to techpodcast.com and do check out all the other technology-related shows over there as well. I'd like to encourage everybody to visit us online over at quicksurf.com. Please do subscribe to the show if you have not already done so. And for those of you who have, thank you so much for subscribing. And uh, with that, let's go ahead and get into some of the cool stuff I've found for this episode. Starting off with the first story that we have uh, from ZDNet.com, Shuttle, Mark Shuttleworth is saying that Ubuntu is sticking with MySQL. Uh, the founder of Ubuntu, Mark Shuttleworth, and his parent company, Canonical, said on Google Plus that Ubuntu 14.04 would include MySQL 5.6. Um, when asked why he wasn't going to use uh, MySQL forks such as MariaDB or anything of that nature, he answered, we'll be happy to include solid code from MySQL forks as they mature. Percona, SkySQL, MariaDB, all are interesting. It would be nice to make easily available. So MySQL is still kind of the gold standard when it comes to uh, that sort of thing. Um, you know, it's one of those things that, uh, that uh, you know, happens to, to you know, it, it's just one of those things. I run MySQL here. Um, you know, a lot of my own personal database stuff is uh, MySQL, or if it's if I want to do an embedded version, since you know I do a lot of Java development, it may be Java DB or something of that nature. But you know, if I want to have a centralized database server, you know, my go-to database is MySQL. So, you know, it's kind of hard to argue with that. From TG Daily, uh, ARM based Rico Magic MK902 LE runs Linux. There's a UK based Klausto. They recently began selling the Rico Magic MK902 LE. It's a small set top box. It's got an ARM processor in it uh, based on, uh, uh, it's a rock chip quad core uh, a Cortex A9. It's paired with a couple of gigs of RAM. You can get up to 16 gigs of storage with it. Um, eight gigs or 16 gigs of storage, a micro SD card slot, HDMI output, four full-size USB ports, which is nice, 802.11 and Wi-Fi, um, 10 100 Ethernet, and a micro SD slot. You can, it ships with Ubuntu, uh, pick unto, the flavor is that it comes with. It can be snapped up for about $159. Pretty interesting. Um, you know, I'd be curious to see what comes, uh, you know, what, what else it comes with. Should be pretty cool. From uh, CNET.com in the review section, Buffalo has released a couple of DDWRT-based Wi-Fi routers. Instead of putting their uh, little, uh, their you know corporate version of their router firmware on there, uh, they decided to make DDWRT the kind of the default. Huge, awesome move. You know, it's one of those things where it's like I really wish more companies would do this. DDWRT is awesome. Um, Pretty awesome. Uh, they have announced a trio of uh, Wi-Fi routers that come pre-installed with the DDWRT Linux-based firmware. The AirStation AC1750, uh, WZR1750 DHPD, the AirStation N600, WZR600 DHP2D, and the AirStation N300, WHR300HP2D. So. Pretty interesting. Um, you know, if you haven't heard of DDWRT, a couple of uh, really common features include OpenVPN, VLAN, full command line tool access via Telnet and SSH. Uh, you get VPN pass through, advanced uh, QoS controls for bandwidth allocation, uh, WDS wireless bridging slash uh, repeating, DNS caching, uh, viewable performance statistics to measure bandwidth levels. You can set this up as a Wi-Fi hotspot, which is nice. Uh, radius authentication for additional wireless security. A DHCP server with the ability to create multiple Wi-Fi networks. Huge boon. This allows you to do kind of the main uh, network. And then uh, assuming you have the hardware for other radios and stuff, uh, kind of a guest network. 
where you can do QoS and kind of limited bandwidth. It's public, you know, guest access unlocked, but they can't really do much and they can't see the rest of your network. Um, IP tables, uh, NAT and firewall. Now, this is not geared towards home users, although a lot of home users use this, but still pretty neat nonetheless. <clears throat> Uh, from evdoinfo.com, Sierra Wireless introduces Legato, uh, the open source embedded platform built on Linux, provides a head start for M2M developers with pre-integrated and validated components that provide connectivity to any cloud, any network, and any peripheral. So Sierra Wireless has announced the Legato platform. It's an uh, open source embedded platform. And it's designed to simplify the, the development of machine-to-machine -machine applications uh, from, device, from a device to the cloud. So uh, they say that they're expecting millions of devices to be connected over the next few years, but there are significant challenges to overcome to enable the Internet of Things. I'm not entirely sure the Internet of Things is something that is really going to take off. I mean, it's kind of neat to have your refrigerator be, be connected to the internet. Uh, but, you know, it's it's just one of those things where it's like, what? So anyway, we'll see how it, that goes. Uh, from uh, Lily Puting, uh, Raspberry Pi gets true open source graphics drivers. The Raspberry Pi is a single board computer that sells for as little as $25 and can which be used for everything from learning to code to surfing the web to operating as a cheap home media center. Since launching two years ago, it has been popular with open source enthusiasts. Since the tiny, cheap, and low-power computer is designed to run Linux-based software, but unfortunately, independent developers haven't had access to all of the source code. Well, that has changing. Broadcom has released open source graphics tri drivers for the chip used in the Raspberry Pi, which should make it easier to enable hardware accelerated graphics for Linux, Android, and other operating systems. So. Pretty interesting. Uh, we'll see how this plays out over the next several months, but uh, should be pretty cool to keep an eye out on. That will do it for this edition of the Geekinator. As always, everything we've talked about is linked up in the show notes, which you can find online over at quicksurf.com. Please do subscribe to the show if you have not already done so. And with that, I will see all of you on the next episode. I'll see you then. Bye.